Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Pino Trogo from San Francisco State University. This is the introduction to drawing for designers class. And it's Monday, September the 7th to 2020. And today we're gonna draw a cube, a cylinder and a sphere. Just the basic shapes which will help us in the next drawings which will be a mug and a uh, clothespin. And I'm just going to quickly go through some drawings that I did the other day when the video actually did not work. Um, so this will be my little storyboard for today. Um, so we're going to start with the cube. We're going to show the cube in its um, kind of on the plane with a background. Uh, we're going to talk about how the line should all be converging to one point if the cube is drawn in perspective and not converging to uh, separate points for the same set of lines which are parallel. And uh, normally we draw cubes actually without worrying about perspective because it's a little simpler, okay? But there is something a little slightly off in that view because we're used to seeing them in perspective. And uh, you know, even the simple thing of just looking at the cube right now, you'll see that it is a little bit converging, uh, the, the parallel lines to the some points in the back. And we're going to talk about how these angles, the two sides, as one goes up, the edge needs to be shortened. And as this goes down, the edge actually needs to be longer relative to the other one. Okay, and the standard one that we use is this one where this might be about 30 degrees and that's 30 degrees and we call that isometric. And it's very useful because it's very um, regular, but it can be um, less interesting sometimes. So we're gonna quickly show how to uh, section a cube, which will actually be useful later when we do our cube section, one of the projects. Uh, by finding median points and diagonals and by then constructing your object, in this case, some kind of corner shape object uh, out of that cube. Uh, then we're gonna show, we're gonna talk about ellipses and how they fit inside the cubic space. And um, I'm gonna be going by a book by a German or a Swiss professor named Mario Bolin. Um, it's called drawing. It's in German, unfortunately, which I don't understand, but I got most of it. Um, and so I'm going to be following that. Um, and one trick that it does that I actually had not used in the past is that once you do an ellipse, what you do is you f uh, move up this axis a little bit. So it's a little bit off center so that when you draw these median lines, um, you're gonna have a little bit of perspective effect. Okay, this part is gonna be a little bit smaller. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at that. Uh, we're gonna talk about how an ellipse of something that is uh, cylindrical, for example, this object, if it's sitting on the plane like that, and obviously your view now would be more like this if you're looking at the object, um, the ellipse, this ellipse, okay, that we're drawing, um, which to be I'm gonna draw a quick ellipse here and see if I can match it. Um, I'm gonna draw the axis too. So no matter how you spin it, of course you can spin a cylinder. If it's sitting properly on the ground like this, in other words, if you're gonna see it like this, your drawing is always gonna have, let me see if I can match that, it's always going to have your ellipse in this correct direction. Now I have to try to hold it straight. It's never gonna be like this, okay? That would not be, that would be a cylinder that's actually floating in space kind of at an angle. So no matter what you do, when you're drawing a cylinder, some like a glass that's sitting on the ground, always draw it with this axis, with the main axis, with the short axis rather, parallel to the main cylinder and the long axis perpendicular to that. If you draw it like this, 
and then you project it up, what you might have, as I drew here, is maybe a, a flask, is maybe a, a flask, okay? Or a cylinder that's floating in space, for example, like that. Uh, we're going to show, we're going to talk about how to fit a cylinder into a cubic space and how the, again, that axe, those two axes have to follow. The short axis always follows the general direction of the cylinder. Like so, or rather like that. And we're going to talk a little bit about contour lines and how that trick of shifting the center up a little bit, which is not in this particular example, which results in having these so-called contour lines overlap each other, the ones in the back and the ones in the front. Instead, we'll use that little trick to show how by shifting the center up a little bit, uh, then the contour lines defined by these points, starting at those points, in this case of a, of a beer can, um, give us a little bit of that perspective effect if these were transparent. Uh, and in truth, of course, a perspective of, of a circle is not an ellipse, but it's this funny shape, um, which would be really hard to draw. So an ellipse is very symmetrical. This half is equal to that half, and this half is equal to that half. But in perspective, a circle, which would be this circle right here, once you start drawing the center, you see that already the center is gonna be, uh, it's gonna be further back, right? So the tis is smaller than that. And drawing an ellipse into that wouldn't give you, wouldn't match these points. So, but for our purposes, we kind of disregard that and we just work with ellipses. Uh, and then we'll do a, a sphere quickly and I'll, I'll show how to make it look like a, a real ball, a real sphere. Again, with this um, uh, equator, uh, mer uh, let's say meridians, um, but they could also be contour lines. For example, as you have contour lines in this in this um, tennis ball, which is kind of like two hands like this. Okay. So once again, this is a book by Mario Bolin. I like to call him Super Mario Drawing because he's so good. Uh, I believe these drawings are actually from his students at the School of Design in Basel, okay? And there's, it, the book has a combination of uh, uh, hand drawings and, uh, and uh, computer drawings. Okay, so before I start, I'm gonna grab a bunch of tracing paper this is a good pad for tracing paper, which you should get eventually. Uh, and tracing paper just means you can see through, but not completely, it's a little bit translucent. So it, it's a sort of an in-between. Um, and then I'm gonna grab some sketching paper. These are nine by 12 pads, which you can get at the art supply store. And um, so it's not fancy paper, it's for sketching, it's fairly thin. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep that around. And um, let's see, maybe I'll start with, with sketching paper. I mean, with tracing rather. Um, and just since we're talking about supplies, these are very good pencils. They're called uh, Blackwing, Blackwing pencils. Uh, and this is a Blackwing uh, sharpen, which has two separate, it's like a two-step, Sharpen it, so you sharpen it first, oops, on the thing on the left, which gives a very big protruding thing, and then this refines it and makes it nice. And then I like to also break it up and refine it even by sketching, by, uh, by making it smooth there, okay, like that. Uh, so I recommend getting pencil, are more expensive than regular pencils, but they're really great. And definitely this sharpen is fantastic. Um, I'll have another video for tools. So, um, so the first image is basically showing a cube. 
okay, in relation to a plane, well, two planes really, right? A vertical plane and a horizontal plane. And it's amazing how our, our eye just says, oh, okay, that's obviously a cube. A cube is not some funny other thing. Um, some room here. Um, so the angles are very important. So once again, these angles, normally we start with an angle that is typically 30 degrees and 30 degrees, meaning if this is 120, 120 and 120, because you got 360 in a whole circle, um, then if you do the math, it just works out that this is 30 degrees right here. Uh, when these are all the same, if you had a pie that split exactly um, three ways, and I have another little, um, I did, I had a little, this, this uh, sort of even, let's call it a sort of a middle ground angle, is this angle whereby if you look at a cube, you will, um, the three axes, or the two horizontal and the one vertical axis are going to be going, and now I have to try to match it, and I'm having a little hard time, but sooner or later I'll get there. Um, so, so that's very convenient because, um, well, the main reason it's convenient is that you can then draw objects where the relationships between the three axes are always one-to-one. -one. So if it's a cube, you draw it like this, right? This is the same as that, this is the same as that, this is the same as that. But if the angle changes, it has to change, those lengths have to change a little bit. So as soon as I move this, perhaps like that, if I can do a projection of that line now with my pencil, okay, you can see that this is a little going up. Okay, so let's see, it might be that long, right? But here it's obviously much longer. So that's something to remember. Is that as this angle goes up, the line gets shorter. As this angle goes down, it doesn't necessarily get, get longer, but it just stays whatever it is and this one shortens. Um, what you don't wanna do for sure is this. You don't want to draw, even though it's possible, you don't, draw, you don't want to draw cubes like this. I mean, everybody does them, of course, because it's convenient. Now notice how this is totally flat, so it's gone down a lot. I guess I should have drawn it the other way, um, perhaps like that, right? So this angle is dropped down dead to that line, and this is pretty high. Let's say it's 45, and so this is shortened. So we accept that to be a cube. However, notice that, right? If, if I draw a cube like this, if that's my view of the cube, Okay, um, there is no way that if I start turning it, I can see this line like that. Okay, so if I try to match now two of these lines, perhaps, let's see, that one and this one, right, there is no way that I can see there is no way that I can see the other edge. Now, as soon as I turn that, and I try to now still match the lines, you can see that this line would be going, well, somewhere here, right? Okay, even though that angle is correct. So, so try to get away from drawing cubic shapes uh, where you're actually showing the cube straight on and then you're also showing the right it's just that's just not how you would possibly see it unless of course now i don't know if this is yeah you might if you went really close to the camera and tried to have one eye on one side and one eye on the other that's a different story because we have uh, two eyes and we have stereoscopic vision and in theory we could look here and then we could look here too but these are supposed to be eyes um, Okay, like a 
some kind of bug. All right. So here, Balin is simply showing how you can, how you, you know, you start with this main axis, you, and then what you do is you move your lines more or less parallel, okay? So you repeat and you generate the plane by, by translating, the proper word is translating, moving across the line, this particular line. You can see there is already a little bit of perspective here. So once again, you can do it, you can also disregard it. Um, most of the time I disregard it because it's easier to not think about perspective, okay? However, it is nice to, to have an image that kind of resembles uh, reality, right? By the way, this is very close to the camera now, so it gets a little bit more distorted than it would normally. Uh, different versions, again, of the cube. Um, I wish these were transparent, but it's not. Um, Anyway, uh, what happens too is that if you try, if you start doing one angle, you know, a little bit down and then the other up, you know, that, that can work, right? Uh, but what doesn't really work is if you start doing both going down at the same time. So that, in other words, if I do this, right? Um, because that that just doesn't doesn't work. I mean, in theory, you can go all the way down and have something like that, which you see here in the bottom. But that's not very informative, right? So in this case, yes, everything is truly down, and it's true that this is a straight line, and this is a straight line. Well, more or less again, because we have perspective, um, but it's not very very useful. Okay, if you're gonna do perspective, of course, what you want to do is make sure that you have at the most three vanishing points. See if I can get this in one shot. Um, but in practice, what we do is we eliminate the bottom one because we tend to think of verticals as verticals and not converging anywhere, right? Even though they do, especially if you look up at the big building. Um, so in this drawing, you have two sets of lines that converge, right? All these lines converge to the right and all these lines converge to the left, but this one just stay vertical, just stay parallel. Um, and of course, these four lines are all parallel, so they cannot just go, you know, onto their own merry, um, merry walk, so to speak. So if you would try to connect these lines here, you would say that that these two top lines would connect there, and then these two bottom lines would connect here. And that would not be a cube, that would be, I'm not sure what, but something else. Um, Okay, so make sure that you try to have them all co converge to the same spot. Let's see, where would that be? Perhaps like that. Um, Um, there is a nifty trick here that he showed and to see how you can do the right proportions on a cube that is um, let's see. Yeah. that is inscribed in a circle and kind of spinning around the corner. Okay. Um, kind of like that. Okay. And what he's showing is that if you if you keep your if you keep the points of the cube, and this is a little bit advanced, but let's try it anyway. 
In other words, because these edges are always basically a, um, a radius, right? The edge of the cube is a radius of the circle. They always have to stay touching, right? It's kind of tied to that spot. So when you draw a cube here, if this is my ellipse, which we haven't, we haven't gotten into yet, but let's, this is a view of my circle in, in oblique or perspective. Okay, so when we start with one cube, let's say we put it there, I've got my two points. Okay, now I wanna do another one. Um, how would I do that? So let's see if I, maybe I'll do one over here. So I have to think of my angles again. If that's a low angle, this would be a high angle. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna flip the one that's actually drawn in the drawing on the right side, I'm gonna flip it to this side. So you can see, I hit this, I hit that, and then I just, I just, um, it's a little tough because of the binding, but let's see, where are we? Yeah, not too bad. And I'm using, by the way, these really, again, beautiful pencils. They're also very soft. And so it's really great for the video. Um, and it's really great for free sketching, right? So you don't have to worry about being neat. Okay, a quick example of how to show an ellipse inside the cube. And this is what I was talking about earlier, right? Remember we talked about, if you draw your ellipse, like this, meaning inscribing in, in, in the square like that, this is gonna be a funny object. If you, if, you, if you do your lines like this, it's gonna look like, again like a flask or like an oval container, okay? So make sure that you turn your ellipse to always match, to always match the vertical. And the vertical, just to be, you know, simple about it, it's really your paper, right? I mean, that's your paper, that's the edge of your paper. So this is the vertical, and this is, of course, is the horizontal, so that we got 90 degrees there. So that's how you want to inscribe the ellipse. Now, this is also not right, because the, the points are not touching. But once you have your, your um, and what you need to do now is also you need to have your hand straight have your pencil straight and don't move your wrist like this and try not to even move your elbow. Instead work kind of like from the shoulder. Um, so if you have your pencil and this is your hand and this is your elbow and this is your shoulder, you wanna try to move your, um, your pendulum, right? It's kind of a pendulum is working from here as much as you can. It's probably more from here, but not definitely not here, okay? Um, because it's easier to draw the ellipse that way. See, I'm gonna now move the paper because I'm having trouble here moving on my stool. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw my ellipse matching my, my pencil with that axis, okay? And I'm gonna get it away from myself so that I can really stretch a little bit. And by the way, I'm sitting on a stool, a hard stool the table is fairly high, but this, and the stool is fairly high, but it's, it's a little hard, but it's, so, it's, it's a good way not to have a chair that moves too much, okay? Uh, to have a, how should I say, a pivot point. So right now I'm using also my feet to keep my body kind of still uh, so that I can work from my, um, it's, not, it's not so great, but, I, somehow I did it. What I was doing is I was trying to match that square underneath and I got a little bit confused. In fact, I should have really not paid attention to the square underneath and that's much better. Um, okay, we're gonna look really quick at how uh, we can get Uh, we can get a quick construction. Again, this will be useful later when we do our cube, okay? 
So once you have your envelope for your cube, what I call the envelope, the glass box, um, you find the centers sometimes by doing diagonals. Oops. So if I do a diagonal, I find my center there and that allows me to do the other lines. Put a little white paper so that I stop. There we go. Okay, so if I were to do maybe another diagonal here, even though I don't need it because I have this spot, so I could do this. And again, now there is a little bit of perspective, right? But you can't disregard that. Just think it's all straight, all parallel, I mean, right? So all like that, as opposed to like that, okay? Either way, it is nice if you can get a little bit of the perspective, but it's not absolutely required. Um, Okay, so that's our basic shape. Let's see what it looked like. Now that I have all these points, I sort of figured out, I transfer them here. And then I can simply connect them. And I need this structure down below here too. Okay, let's see, like that. Yeah, so this is a little off. Don't use eraser, by the way, okay? No good. Oh, I can't, I can't write on it. Um, because it's, it just takes away your, your energy and your focus and your, your momentum, okay? Um, now, you can see I didn't do a too good of a job because given the angles, this part should have been shown much more and instead I showed them about the same. But I'll leave that like that. Um, I think what I, yeah, why? Because I, let's see, like that. Okay, let's keep going. And, and this again, I think I believe are drawings by, um, by students um, in Basel, which is in Switzerland. There's a famous school of design there called, um, yeah, I guess school of design. Um, what people learn to do Swiss design, which is okay. It's good, it's very precise, sometimes too precise. Um, but these are nice because they're not very, you know, they're not super precise, but they, they're precise in the sense that the structure is great. And that's what I care too for your drawings until we get to using tools. Um, what you want to do right now is really not worry too much. Um, this is showing again how to put the cylinder inside the cube, but we'll, um, we'll look at that now because we're going to, we're gonna do der Zylinder, I believe that's how you pronounce it. Um, and this is this little trick, and I've had this book for a long time, and at some point I'll, I'll want to maybe contact him and see if, if we can do an English version. But, um, but this little trick about moving the, um, well, two things. Here is moving the, uh, well, let's step back for a moment. Uh, we'll keep that thought about moving the center line, the horizontal center line up. So for now, actually, we want to focus on drawing ellipses in perspective, if you like, or in oblique, okay? So again, we have said that a circle in perspective, this is a smaller circle than the one I'm gonna draw. By the way, if you're trying to draw a real circle, it's really hard. When you're drawing an ellipse, you're working from this edge, from this whole palm here. You're resting that on the, on the uh, right? So here's your pencil, here's your fingers, here's your hand and here's your palm. Okay, very weird, but more or less you get the idea, right? But when you draw a circle, you can't do that because if you draw a circle, uh, yeah, you, just, you have to use your wrist and so, but because we don't want to use the wrist, what you want to do is, what I do is I use this as a little pivot point. So I, don't, I can't see it now, but I go up and then I, I move that around in a circle. And that is kind of like a, 
an old plotter. Okay, so anyway, a circle, if this is a perspective of the square that contains that circle, the center would be found again, geometric center by two diagonals. And immediately you see again that this part is bigger than that. So here, a circle in perspective would be very, very hard to build because every, every bit changes on and on and on and on again. So that's too hard. And instead we just pretend that it's an ellipse, that we actually see an ellipse, okay? Um, but again, this is the center now, exactly the middle. And what he's doing is he's moving up the middle of, sorry, that was crooked. Uh, he's moving up the, uh, that line. Um, but you should practice, practice, practice doing ellipses again. I'm gonna turn it because it's easier. I'm gonna turn the paper and I'm gonna practice ellipses and the proportions of your ellipses should be about one that would fit inside two squares, side by side, roughly. Um, you can practice them narrower and if you have a if you have a glass and you're looking down um, you would get different ellipses at the different points of view right so they would get shallower and shallower depending on how you're looking but for now let's not worry about that let's just try to do ellipses that are kind of middle of the road ellipses, okay? Try to get your axis, um, try to get your, you know, your two halves the same. And just a, do a bunch, okay? Just get away from the paper. Um, do a kind of a dry run like that. Sometimes they might look right, but as soon as you put as soon as you put maybe like a structure and you know around it, it looks pretty cool, right? Okay. Anyway, there is uh, there are the videos that show how to do the ellipses, but um, and okay. All right, so I believe here, besides doing this little trick with lifting up the, um, the center, the horizontal center, is also um, shortening a little bit the cylinder. You can see this is the projection of the side, so it would be this high, but it's making it a little bit long, uh, shorter, which I believe makes it more, um, yeah, more realistic. Um, and now let's just focus on this little trick because it is it is pretty nifty and because I've never used it, now I'm getting interested in it myself. Um, again, I'm gonna turn the paper because I'm gonna have a little easier time drawing my ellipses because my body, you know, I'm right-handed, I'm right -handed, so I have to turn this this way so that my hand, you know, moves this way with the, you know, my hand right now and my arm is sort of aligned with the book, okay? Um, of course, matching this is going to be tough, but I'll just quickly. Typically, you would want to turn the paper for every line so that you're moving your pencil always in the same direction. Okay, so that's the basic structure. And if you look at this drawing, why it gets this nice little perspective effect is by again shifting this center. Okay, so if I didn't do that, what would happen? Let's see. If I draw these lines, which again would be you know these imaginary lines that perhaps inscribe another cube or another block that contain that. Okay, and I would have these points, and because I'm using my well because these angles are the same when I draw again what I call my contour lines, the ones in the back and the ones in the front would be matching and so there would be less of a 3D effect, okay? Um, 
So instead, what we want to do is move that point, right? So we're going to move this up a little bit. And I'm going to exaggerate here. Let's move it a lot. So that becomes my new center now. Now what I'll do is actually I'll take another piece of trace. Uh, tracing paper is cheap, so you should really, you should really take advantage of that and, and use it. See, so now we're gonna start all over this thing. Oops. Okay, we started out with that. We had our line. We have our various axes. Um, now I'm going to push that up. And by doing so, and I'm going to exaggerate a little bit. Now if I do my imaginary box, maybe a little bit in perspective too, um, by doing this, Let's see if I was successful. Now these points are now going to be overlapping so that when I, and here I barely missed it, but I think it was okay. And the lines in the back, maybe you can do a little bit uh, lighter so that they look like they're in the back. All right, Let's see, it, 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 it pays to move the paper around because it's uh, it just helps. Otherwise everything gets crooked. Um, Okay, so that's, that's very nice. Um, and I'm gonna do now again my, my can to show how that would apply. Before I do that, let me show how it, one of his students applied that principle to, the, uh, to these bottles. And they also deleted two of the lines, right? They deleted these two lines, they just kept these two lines, one and two, All right? Sorry, one and two, I'm gonna draw in the book. I have more than one copy. Um, okay. So I'll keep that drawing as a reference. I'm gonna grab my can and I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna try to make it perfect now, but I just wanna show again this principle of these uh, contour lines. So let's just, let's just say that this is a, a straight cylinder, more or less, and you can more or less, you can measure it. So it's, it's a little bit less than twice as tall. Um, and this gets a little tricky because, but let's try it. Okay, so I'm gonna draw. Two ellipses, one on top of the other. Looks a little short, doesn't it? Um, so I'm gonna try again. It's a nice thing about paper and also the fact that you don't have to erase. Uh, you don't have to worry about it. Okay, so that's the basic shape. Okay, now the other thing is that here there's a circle that's a little bit smaller than the actual width of the bottle. So it comes in a little bit and down and the same thing at the top except a little higher. So what I'll do is I'll determine a higher point here. I'm gonna bring it up where I'm gonna draw another ellipse, smaller ellipse and here I'm gonna go down and draw another ellipse that's a little bit smaller. And I'm just gonna eyeball it for this drawing. I'm not gonna be too fancy. Okay, see that? So you locate your centers and then you hit your lips. And now already I can try to, um, you know, be a little bit, uh, try to connect these lines. You, you can see here, this is what happens. You, by the way, it's really hard to trace the ellipse afterwards. So, oops, sorry. Um, Afterwards, what I do is I do just spots. You know, I maybe I go from a from a, a detail, and I don't try to do the whole thing at once because it's really really hard. Um, this is a little bit crooked there, but and then you can add a few details maybe like that. See, notice how I'm not 
I'm not continuing the uh, the line just to give it a sense. So now we're just going to pretend that maybe this is transparent. Um, also, we're going to do a little bit of, and if you want to be fancy, maybe show a little bit of the hole there. Um, so I could draw them on the contour lines here, but um, yeah, actually, why not? I can always erase them later. Except now I don't have my, oh, my marker, here it is. Okay, so a contour line again would be in this case, just a simple, simple line like that on one side, maybe one on the other. Uh, and technically you would do it there too, right? Okay, so unfortunately this is not transparent, but if it were, we would see, you know, the two in the back. But let's now just, you know, forget about the real thing for a moment. Let's look at this, um, at this cylinder and how our contour lines are gonna be these four lines. So we started out with the ellipse being, let's say it was here. And then we said, we're gonna move it up a little bit to get a higher center. And we're going to draw our axis from that. Again, you know, if this was inside an imaginary box. Um, and then from that, we get these points. And, and now definitely I got, I got points that are quite, quite separate. Um, so I'll do that real quick to go up and down somewhere there in the back. Um, and when it hits here, I have to, okay, and then maybe inside it goes. So where was it? it was, this was the back, right? So this would be, I'm just totally eyeballing it now, but um, and now it's just to give a sense of this shape here. I will again. I'll pretend it's it's transparent, um, and I'm gonna do the my contour lines in the back there too. Okay, and then I guess here they would they would make a little bulge, right? But notice how I lost my center a little bit there. So you don't want to overdo it because otherwise then it becomes a little stiff and a little. So I'm just gonna quickly, quickly finish this. Um, anyway, these these lines really help. I think um, again, it's a little bit confused back there, but um, it doesn't. Yeah, it's not, didn't come out as nice as the last one I made, but uh, you can go back a little bit and say, okay, maybe, yeah, maybe it needs a little bit more detail. Anyway, the main point here is really the contour lines, not the fact that the drawing might be, you know, made super beautiful. Um, let's see if we can say something else about, yes, the cylinder. So if a cylinder is on its side, you have to apply that principle of, um, let's see, did I draw an ellipse earlier? Yeah. That principle of having this main axis, main axis of the object, but really short axis of the ellipse relative to the long axis of the ellipse, that long axis really needs to always match um that direction okay let's see if i can i can't quite match this now because this is lips um well it's fixed and if i move it it's going to get much thinner um so instead let's take the actual cube the actual cylinder rather and place it there right so now i have to i have to try to i'm trying to match it okay so if that's how it's presented and that's lying down on the ground, that's how your lips should match, you see? So if you make your lips like this on a cube that's going this way, it's gonna be weird. Again, it's not gonna be a cylinder anymore, all right?
So let's just do a quick example. If I have a, a block, uh, right, and I want to do a cylinder in that block, I have to now, let me do it a little bit different because I want to, I want to talk about how you shouldn't, um, you shouldn't worry about the fact that your axes are not going to match the diagonals of your cube. In other words, even in this drawing, do you see how, well, now it happens to match, but um, let me just do it with, with a piece of tracing paper on top. Let's say this is my, my block, right? Maybe it should have a little more perspective, but the main direction here is this. Okay, so relative to my ellipse, the opposite direction is going to be, once I find my center there, the opposite direction is going to be like this. And what's happening here is that, look, it doesn't, it doesn't match. Uh, let's see, that goes there. Yeah, it doesn't match my square, right? And you shouldn't worry about that. That's, that's not, yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's not meant to match. Um, in fact, what we want to do now is, again, find that center. Perhaps find the center with the diagonals, but once you find it, make sure these, these two axes are really across. And now I'm not quite doing it right myself, but, and then once you have that, you draw your lips to match that particular angle. Um, because again, if I did it, I'm trying to replicate now another one. If I, drew, if I drew my ellipse, let's say like this, right? Let's say I'm trying to fit it really nicely in that, in that box. But you can see if I now take my, my two axes, look where it's going. It's going in the wrong direction, right? It's straight like this, but that's the direction of my block and it's wrong. It should be going this way. Um, So this is wrong, this would be right. Of course, this ellipse now doesn't match that particular square, but um, so always practice, practice ellipses that way. Um, I would say a good way to practice, oh, by the way, you can do your drawings really. This is another very good pencil, by the way, it's called Mirado Black Warrior. Okay, Black Warrior, I like that. Uh, and I know sh pencils get short and after they get so short, you know, they're going to fall into your hand and that's not good. So you're going to have to buy more pencils. Um, if you make a drawing really big, um, what's nice about that is your arm can move really more freely, right? Now I'm going to be really a little sloppy here, but um, yeah, that, that looks a little... I should change it because it looks a little, yeah, let's say I make a cube like this. Practice doing three cylinders out of this guy or maybe just carving out three ellipses out of the, um, out of each faces. So I'll start with the right. So this is my, first I find the center. This is my main direction. Now I hit again the, uh, almost did it too big. Uh, and then I do the same here. I find the center. So this is the vertical. And now the center kind of happens to somewhat match, but I exaggerate a little bit moving it up. Uh, now the next one would be here. So again, this is my you can see it's always slightly different, right? It's not quite matching your diagonal. It's, it's making sure that these two are always perpendicular, like a real cross, even if it doesn't match these corners, okay? This line is gonna match your main direction, but this can be, you know, depends on, on, on how your angles are working. Um, So practice that, and then here you can, you know, maybe make a kind of a round dice. I don't know if, if 
there's such a thing. Um, okay, so cylinders. Um, I, yeah. and these are some, some beautiful objects again drawn with okay, very, very quickly. We'll do the sphere, uh, which again is a circle. Now, a circle, I mean, a, a sphere in perspective or in any kind of view is always going to be a circle. I mean, again, no matter how you slice it. Um, so, the trick is how to make it look like a sphere and not just like a circle. And one way, as it shows, is to do an ellipse and it, you know, basically it's the equator. Um, and then do another cut, which is one on the meridians, right? And by that, I mean, you know, perhaps the Greenwich meridian where the international time is set. Now, he, he finds a spot here, which is the poles, the two poles, by, 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 let's see. Yes, by drawing, again, if this was in a, if this was in a cube and I was drawing the projection of that, I might have an ellipse that looks like this on the side. So what I'll do is I'll take that axis and I'll, I'll do this and I'll draw another ellipse and that gives me the poles. And, um, Yeah, so that starts defining it a little bit. I always like to do another one too. And notice how I'm hitting the poles again. Okay, so now this pencil is a little hard. This is a little softer. So this would be what define my my sphere a little bit. Okay, um, I'll do one other quick thing about even though we're not going to do much shading, but in a ball or in a sphere. And by the way, these lines you can again think of them as contour lines, much like these lines on a on a tennis ball. They define they define the space a little bit. Um, very quickly, there is a thing called a banana shaped shadow. If I have a shadow, I mean a light that's coming from that direction, the shadow is going to be on the opposite direction. And and if you're going to do rapid vis, especially if you are in product design, you'll be shown this thing, which is called again a banana shaped shadow, which is a tr a shadow uh, a shade really on the object because the the cast shadow is gonna be something that looks like that and might be on the plane and you might fade it a little bit. So what you're doing is you're, you're leaving a little bit of highlight here to separate the object from, from its cast uh, shadow. And then here you're gonna, you, might sh you might show a little bit of a, of a little blob, which really is a highlight, but it's just conventional now to make it look like it's should be lighter than this, but since we cannot make it lighter than the actual paper, we're just going to make a little shadow and pretend it's a highlight. Okay, so this sphere looks a little bit, maybe I'll do a little line pretending it's a, oops, crooked, so be careful. Pretending it's maybe like some kind of special, what could it be? Oh, it could be like a, one of those snowballs where you have, you know, the snow. Maybe it's a secret island, I mean, desert island. Okay, um, so we have done the, uh, oh, actually one more quick thing. How, you can start combining shapes to make objects, right? And this is now starting to be a picture, a beautiful picture by combining a sphere by finding its pole, remember it was here, um, and then using that pole to create a neck and then put a cylinder on that neck. And maybe on the opposite pole here, put a base. Okay. 
Okay. Um, Um, at some point, I'll probably scan some of these pages, and actually, there might be already some in I learned. But um, this is another beautiful, uh, beautiful picture. And it's funny as it happens, I have the right, the, basically, the true, real picture that he's showing there. So I don't know. I'll have to ask him if this is exactly the same one. Um, but you can see how he breaks it down, or the student rather. I think again, it's the student. How the shape is broken down. Um, into two circles that overlap a little bit and um, and then the object gets you know gets built up um, let me see if I can try to quickly do it this is going to be a, a little bit tough but um, I'm going to need a little padding Even though I'll probably get the proportions wrong because I'm going to do it fast, I'll show you how you would. So first of all, you would you would sketch your objects, right? So that you get the proportions, the general proportions. So you have those two circles, then you have a, it goes smaller there. And again, I'm going to do it very schematic and then you have that shape. Okay, I made it a little more fat than it really is. Um, so you would need to build these two uh, these two circles right here. So it's it's a it's a box essentially. Um, tell you what, I'll just do it very schematic, just to show perhaps how it is. Okay, and it doesn't quite fit. Let's see if it fits there. Um, and this this tricks should be good for any object that has again shape curves and 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 square parts. Okay, this is all curves. But um, so if this is the width of my yeah, notice how the two circles overlap a little bit. It doesn't quite fit anymore. Um, so what I'm going to do here, see, is I'm going to, I'm just going to do, and I'm now not even like, um, I'm just sort of eyeballing things, but let's see if I can get perhaps a beginning, okay? But you see, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to match these spots, right? And then I'm, I'm going to have a series of other ellipses. Let's see, where is my center? Somewhere there. Right, perhaps one at the bottom. And already I can start, you can see I can already start combining things. Um, then I go up, perhaps I pick up that spot right there. So I'm just going to, again, super eyeball. I'm just gonna, and now perhaps I, Again, this is a little bit of a fast, quick drawing, but um, then these axes will help me determine where the spout is, okay. Um, there. And now I can, I think I'm gonna copy the drawing a little bit um, just because I wanna, but you can see this is, this is going up and then it's got a, a lip there. Um, and the tricky part is the handle, but what you wanna do is, again, draw a contour line so that you've figured out where it's gonna, where it's gonna go. That's where it's gonna come out from, okay? Um, and you can see he's building a little, a little square here, a little structure for that for that handle, okay, which would be this one. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Um, I'm gonna create, and I'm gonna exaggerate, I'm gonna create a nice clear shape so that you can really see it, okay? Um, within that, again, another circle. 
right? Am I doing this right? Yeah, sort of. Actually, I wasn't. I wasn't paying attention. My axis is a little bit off. So go back. Yeah. So that's my main shape. Now it's getting a little, a little confusing. So I've got some trace. Um, and now I would give it, you know, a thickness. Where were we? Yeah. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna stop now because I wanna. The video is getting a little bit too long, but um, but you can see I did it fairly quickly. And it's not as beautiful as the original, but it's getting there. And we do need some contour lines because otherwise it looks pretty pretty flat. Yeah, my proportions are not quite right. My details are not quite right, but we're getting there. Um, and what I wanted to do is, let me show you a few more drawings from this book. Um, at the end, there are some objects which don't have to do these, you know, difficult objects. Um, although you could, you could try. Um, for next assignments, we're going to do a, a mug and a, a clothespin, but you can also pick something else. Um, and now, well, we'll. I noticed was a little. I need to make sure I keep the focus right. Um, What I want to do is show how you could apply what we just discussed to perhaps um, some other objects. Let's see. Okay. And by the way, if you were drawing Sometimes, you know, if you don't have the real thing, like if you didn't have an actual carton, um, like this one I had painted for the first assignment, I found a little box of a, of a, of a record player cartridge needle thingy. And I realized, oh, I can make, you know, I can make a, a little carton, you know, a little skinny carton. I found this really nice object, which is again, another little picture. And the nice thing about it, it's a very simple shape. It's a cylinder and then it's got this little handle. Okay. So if I wanted to do that and you might want to do this kind of object. So it would be cylinder. Then I have this handle and again, I do a little sketch on the side to see what it, what it really is. If I were to do it in orthographic view. And then I try to transport that here by, oops. So the point where I might attach it is this line. Uh, it also helps sometimes to start actually from the square box into which your cylinder is, right? Uh, that gives you kind of a structure, okay? Right, because now you know I can get I can get my my bearings, my my construction nicely. Um, right here, I didn't do it, but uh, if I if I were to do it. Um, I would have done that all work. So let's let's just draw this here. So this is our, you know, it's a little bit further down and I'm just gonna build a little box, right? I could do it first as if there was no, 
no thickness to it, right? So you have to imagine that you have that cut out there. So if this is my, my spot sideways, my shape sideways, you know, perhaps you measure, you know, maybe it's like three quarters, something like that. And then you see what I did there. I just, I just divided up and then you would, now I'm going to exaggerate this. Um, So I'm keeping my lines here parallel. And here, again, I move the paper so that I do little ellipses, you know, again, in this direction, right? Uh, where are we? Let's see. After a while, sometimes I can't see it myself, but um, maybe there is a thing there. Oh, actually, yeah, I should I should have made it a little bit a little bit thicker. I only went on on one side. Okay. Anyway, there will be another video on the on how to draw a mug. So this will be. Another, maybe another line to show, you know, maybe a little bit of change here at the bottom. Um, okay, well, this was another nice object that I found, an old cassette tape, which has lots of circles. And if you were to do that, um, you know, you could start out with a box, right? And then you do your ellipses, right? And then inside that, maybe some other shape. Um, there's other videos again of how to do these little um, little square thingies, but I mean, I'm sorry, little rounded corners there. And this is now very schematic, and it's a fat cassette, but that sounds good, a fat cassette. Um, This will require a whole video just by itself. I'll do one last thing and then I will stop. And that will be a, uh, a tape dispenser, which at first I thought, oh, okay, great. It's a lot of squares and circles, but it's really all circles, right? Except you can, you can inscribe it into a structure that is square, right? So start out by maybe figuring out the proportions. I always do this. So it's like, how big is this? If this is one, this is one and a half, let's say. Okay, so right there, I happen to do it right. Um, because that gives me a lot of, you know, where is the circle, this circle? Again, it's like a, a two thirds. So maybe the circle is there. So maybe that's there. And then there's a bigger circle right here, but here it becomes kind of square and here there's a smaller circle right here. So that's maybe this. So you, you start out, you know, with the outer shape. Now here there's a big, another big circle and it doesn't have to be exact, but, and then you have another circle here, which maybe it's at the same position, who knows? Maybe it's a little low, maybe it's there. And then you, you start, you know, defining your, so there is something really nice about drawing with a very soft, well, not too soft, not like 8B. This is probably the equivalent of B or 2B. Um, because your hand just feels, feels good. Uh, so now what I'll do, even though I didn't quite get it right, this, this is a little, a little big there. I'll just quickly transfer that onto a shape that is 
again one and a half and I'm going to use my standard 30 30 so these angles are the same uh, about 30 30 which again by the way is the tool your triangle um, and I will um, I will just transfer these elements now in the middle of the shape because everything gets squished if you had the square this gets squished and this gets expanded right um, but what doesn't change is what's on the side. And so what you do is you pick these spots from the side to define, to define your positions. Okay. So right now what I, what I did is I just found that spot because remember there was one, two and three thirds. Okay. So let me start with the first ellipse. Then we had the second one right here, a big one. Then here we said it was a smaller one, so I have to, I have to do that. And then somewhere along here, there was this other one. So remember, I'm just doing ellipses, 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 and then I'm going to maybe there is maybe there's there's a connection there. I don't know, sort of maybe, I'm making it up a little bit, but um, and maybe this goes you know to that corner. So you you try to use whatever you can. And here there was another one. There was a big circle here. So this is the square right there. This is the square here, twisted of course. So I'm gonna do a big circle, which is this line. Okay, one last sharpening and hopefully that will be enough. And now I can sort of not even look at that anymore. Um, Let's see, this I think I made too big. You can always adjust, right? So remember from here, I have to connect to this spot right here because it's square there, right? So I don't know if I, if I got it quite right, but it's, And I'm exaggerating here in my, in my drawing so that it's really clear on the video. Um, it looks like I made it a little fat there, but. So that's my basic shape, right? In oblique view or in isometric. Okay, which means that these two are the same, uh, these two angles. Uh, now the trick is how to extrude this and I'll show you a quick trick. Um, with another piece of, of trace. If I find my pad of trace, which is actually underneath, I don't want to move it, I found another one. Um, you can literally extrude it by repeating that shape up or down, okay? So what I'll do is I'll, I'll first trace it. Um, and sometimes if you don't have if you don't have tracing paper, you can do it with paper that's, you know, somewhat transparent. Um, see, I'm trying to follow the, um, the ellipses, okay? And again, I'm working from my, and I'm having a hard time because again, I need to move the paper because it's easier if I keep my hand aligned there. But that's the basic shape, right? I'm not gonna try to do all the details. I'm just gonna extrude it down, pretending that it is detailed. Maybe it's like, you know, a whole cylinder there. Uh, here's what you do. You simply take that and you just move it up, okay? So you just move that up and, you know, we have to figure out how much it is. Let's figure it out. It's, I bet you it's the same. Oh, rough, a little less than the diameter. Yeah, actually it's exactly the diameter, uh, which means, which means what? Um, because these are funny diameters. I'm just going to eyeball it. So I'm gonna move it up like that. And I'm just gonna call it good. So, so I'm gonna repeat that shape. Oops, I made a mistake. 
uh, 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 okay, one exception. <laughs> oh, that was not nice. All right. Uh, made a mistake because I had to do this, right? Right there. And maybe I'm doing it too much. See why it's not good to, to erase. It breaks up your rhythm, really. Now, here's another trick. Here, you have to hit the tangent points. Okay, these two spots are perfectly vertical on top of one another. Let me see if I can draw it. I find my Sharpie here. It would be, which point is this? Uh, da, 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 I think it's this one right here. Yeah, so we're trying to find out how this line shows. And the way you want to do it is if you have two cylinders on top of one another, right? Well, actually, because one is hidden by the other. What you want to do is find the tangent point there and the tangent point there, and then you can connect it. And that's what the shape is going to look like. Okay. So here, once I found those two, I'm going to connect it like that. And the same thing here. Okay, find that, I find this. And right now I'm just gonna draw it like pretending it's a, I don't know, like a, a piece of wood or something. But I could try to do to do this little detail. I'll just I'll just eyeball it, I'll make it it will go from the half and then um Let's see, yeah, it's at the top there. Um, roughly, so what, I, what I'll do is I'll, uh, no, that's the bottom right there. So it's, it's like this. No, I'm really, so I'll have to do these lighters so that it looks like they're they're behind, right? So now I'm just gonna darken that. I'm just gonna imagine that this is shown a little bit underneath. And what's happening here with the rest? Yeah, I'll just show it a little bit. Well, I went back and forth there. I never really got the thickness right, but um, I just made it too thin. But imagine that is, okay, you can imagine that is this guy, which is a thinner one. It's hard to see in the video here, but so let's pretend it's this one instead, okay? So that will be it for today's video. And the next video will be about tools.